So welcome back to the uh, Bite Battles at Laugh Bite 2022 again. Uh, this time we have Totemat uh, against Dresden Boy. Uh, and with me is Aldroid. Hi there. Hi there. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this match. I mean, uh, both contestants, uh, Totemat's known shader coder, Dresden Boy, known size coder. So uh, different scenes and interesting uh, to see what's uh, going to happen. We had uh, Dresden Boy uh, participating uh, on Love Bite Battlegrounds in the uh, Bite Battle there, where uh, I think he went against Jobe with the Dragon team. And Totemat's uh, first time around with the, uh, with, uh, the Bite Battle, uh, but uh, known for shader work and of course lifecode.demozoo.org for all live coding stuff. So, um, so have you got the um, has the keyword just been given? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the keyword was psycho clock. Psycho clock. Now that's uh, a lot of pos potential for interpretation with that. Yeah. I think. I think PS suggested that keyword just to mess with uh, with our contestants. So interesting to see what they will come up with. Blame PS. Yeah. If you like uh, on the chat, if you like the uh, keyword, uh, cheer on PS. If you <laughs> think it's <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> Just madness. Uh, tell them as well. You can't well. vote for the commentators. That's a bad precedent to start. <laughs> yeah. That's but quite a begun. Yeah, we are. Okay, seven, six, six, five, five, four, three, two, one, and go. We're off. Yeah, interesting. I haven't seen Totemat do anything on uh, on fantasy console, so this is. Uh, Going to be, uh, we're in for a ride. <laughs> Hold on a minute, it's not Bonzomatic. No, I'm afraid it's not Totem Mad. Yeah. I like this about about Love Bite and about the uh, the Bite Battles in general. Is you they always send nice comments to each other in the yeah. comments at the start, which is uh, it's a good spirit to have, I think, in a scene. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, Totemat already starting assigning a sinus, cosinus, assigning the M to math function, which is like a basic setup if you want to do some uh, proper math. Who's going to get something on the screen first? Yeah. And then Dresden Boy, just starting with a circle and just growing as a fact from there. And we're only like a, a minute and a bit in, so all the time in the world. Oh, well, that's and quick. we've got a circle, a bouncy circle, even. So yeah, while well, all our contestants are uh, still uh, battling away, uh, Eldroid, you're one of the organizers for the, uh, uh, you're, you're the organizer for the Bite Jam. Uh, so, can you tell a, a little bit about what a bite jam actually entails? So, it's a little bit like a bite battle, but without the pressure, I think, is the, the easiest way to describe it to people who are watching a bite battle. So, if you think, you know, the people who are here, the people who are coding, they've got a lot of talent and imagination, and they are directing it fiercely towards the single-minded goal of of winning around in 25 minutes. So if you give them a bit longer, if you give them an hour and you say, do what you like for an hour, they can produce something completely different and they will entertain you for an hour and we'll just put on some tunes and chill out. Um, there'll be four, four coders uh, working to a soundtrack and it's gonna be a really nice, good vibe. 
Yeah. I think it's a good way in if uh, you think like, oh, this, I like this uh, live coding. Uh, I, I like uh, the TIG-80, but uh, well, this battle aspect, uh, I'm, I'm a bit nervous about that. And by jam is your way in. Uh, we've seen some of the contestants like uh, Dave84 just starting with a bite jam and then moving, uh, progressing to the bite battle. And Dresden Boy already has a clock on screen, so that's uh, promising. It, it looks far too um, non psycho at the moment. I think it'll yeah. uh, be interesting to see where the psycho ness comes in. Yeah, clean as a whistle still. <laughs> yeah. So to Matt, much more code going on already. Still has the pixel loop in there. So uh, I think what's happening there at the bottom part uh, is uh, the copying pixel over from uh, top to bottom. So it's taking a pixel one row above and then copying that down. So that should give it some, some upwards or downwards movement. So that as that's interesting. And the I cool think thing, boys' approach is more like drawing, drawing yeah. a clock. Yeah, I like how Totemat actually uh, does a combination of, uh, I mean, of using primitives like a cert B, like a circle and a line, and then using a sort of pixel effect to mess with that. So uh, yeah. It does both in a, in a single effect, so that's interesting to see. And Dresden Boy is still uh, straight up primitives. I do like it when they don't use a CLS in their, their routine, so for a moment you just get to see their code getting destroyed by the effect. <laughs> still a cl clean clock on uh, Dresden Boy's side. Ah, interesting effect. So yeah, no CLS for you then. <laughs> if you can avoid it, it's it's only another five extra bytes. So uh, if you don't need one, then don't have one, I think. Yeah, fair enough. We will figure out this rad stuff. We surely will. Yeah, that's starting to look kind of clocky. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's nice. I like the construction of a little bit of extra data plus the, the distortion of having it drop downwards. Yeah. I'm interesting if uh, Totemat will keep uh, the, the scrolling down of the cold screen in. I mean, we've seen uh, uh, Gover do something similar like that uh, at Outline last year, where they uh, he had in the bite battles at this OK Zoomer thing where he just use the uh, the tick 80 text editor screen data uh, and use it for a roto zoomer so that was interesting and it looks like totemat is, is working a similar angle here Dresden boy setting up a screen function so that's a function so on tick 80 you have two functions you have the tick function it's called 60 times a second where you just do your main update and there's the option to use a screen function that uh, is called every scan line so you can do stuff like raster bars there and uh, setting a different color each uh, scan line and it seems that's what dresden boy is uh, trying to do here Eldroid, I think you have used scan function as well, haven't you? I love the scan function. It's a way to get so much more color onto the screen just by poking into the uh, the color registers on every line. And I think uh, I think that's what's going on um, just in here as well. Yeah, uh, just look at that. Yeah. It kind Very of reminds nice. me of a sort of um, vaporwave sun kind of effect. Ah. That would be interesting. I do like the palette as well. Really, really cool color uh, scheme. I mean, I, I, I tried messing with some custom palettes myself, but they always end up either bluish or brownish, and this has the full view going on. It's very nice for doing something like a... Uh, 
you know, a sunset or something where you want to have a smooth gradient uh, in a, you know, a platform that typically only has 16 colors. But it is quite hard to get a, a transition between the colors that doesn't look like, you know, as we were talking about earlier, the Dutch color scheme and just every single color under the sun. So that's a nice effect. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Tosip Matt seems to be figuring out some more of the rad stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we are approaching the halfway. Uh, I don't know, we're approaching like a 60 minute mark. So uh, there's still enough time to uh, iterate up on, on the beautiful stuff that's already there at the moment. <laughs> Plus, Matt is not going to figure out mad stuff. Oh, it's according to his comments. Yeah. <laughs> that was too rad for us. There's still a, a go to comment in there on the top, it seems. Or it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Dresden boy still uh, having the comment in as well. I, I think, think it can be helpful to have a, a little comment in there as a safety buffer to, you know, when you start to panic, just go, ah, I've got a comment I can delete. Yeah. And then you, you feel a little bit calmer. Yeah, I think it's good to have uh, like a comment in, like you said, like I have, have a little buffer. <laughs> and, uh, so you don't go out, uh, too overboard with your effect. So, uh, yeah, when you go, you, you see it go over like 400 lines, you go like, oh, okay, kill that comic. Toastmax changed direction quite a lot in the past minute, yeah. I think. Very interesting, all the uh, iterations. Iterating fast as well. And I think something tunnely um, is going on with that U and V, maybe. Exotic corn will be proud. <laughs> Interesting. Both our contestants uh, would qualify well for the uh, rainbow uh, keyword as well. <laughs> A10 square root. That's something that's quite nice about working in Tick80 is you can just go, you know, this is a function for generating a color and just play with the figures and get constant, um, you know, iterative feedback on what looks good and what doesn't. So you really get used to just using the code as a, as a way of expressing yourself. Yeah, isn't that what the whole demo scene thing is about? Sometimes, but I think sometimes it takes a long time to go from right, changing your code to seeing the finished product, whereas, you know, there's no compilers involved here. It's it's very rapid, just hitting, hitting the control R buttons and uh, seeing what your changes mean in real life. So Totemat a bit over limit, Dresden Boy uh, still well within uh, 256 bytes. I feel like Totemat is still making a, a fairly substantial addition to theirs as well. Mm -hmm. Dresden Boy is still a very, very strong concept that he's held on to for, for a while. Yeah, and oh, it's it's pulsating, which is fairly fairly psycho. I feel, um, yeah. so definitely within the scope of the the prompt. Yeah, what defines uh, a psycho here? Is it the colors? 
Is it the red movement on Totemat's side? I was thinking of, um, you know, creepy stabby arms or something like that. Uh, but uh, there's a certain, there's a certain uh, lessening aura about it. So maybe that's, maybe that's what it requires. Totemats is a very, very soothing, I feel. It's a soothing clock. Yeah, nothing too chaotic uh, going around there. Yeah, still uh, 11 minutes uh, and a bit on the clock, so enough time to, uh, to, to get into the optimizing bit. Both are our contestants uh, over the size limit. Close at map by quite a lot, I think. I think Dresden Boy will be able to to sh shoe off um, 15 bytes quite easily, but uh, Totet Matt's going to have to work. Yeah. Yeah, there aren't a whole lot of white spaces uh, in there as well, so uh, it's going to be tough. 303, I like that. Yeah, Totemat starting to uh, size optimize at this uh, point. It's still uh, a long way to go. Yeah. So we see quite a few different techniques for size coding. Um, I've certainly seen a lot of scanning the code for, for redundancies. And uh, I know PS was upset a little bit earlier because you could see a, um, a stray few bytes that, uh, um, that we didn't really need. Oh, that's cool. I like that's that. That's cool, numbers, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The, the clean whistle uh, clock uh, is, is no more. We got crazy numbers going on. Ah, uh, nice. Both contestants having uh, the rotation in the clock. Yeah. So once you've deleted all the, the white space and all of the unnecessary characters, what other things can you do to, to side code something like this? Uh, yeah, that's hard. There is a trick to do the uh, square root different by not using math, but doing uh, like to the power of uh, 0.5, that saves a bit of space. You can do the tickets load thing, but that's... I can see them playing quite around a bit with the syntax there, especially Toad at that. Um, you know, having point zero one without a zero in front of it. I think you might have lost uh, Super Rogue there. For a while. I think you might be right. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help out for this last eight minutes. I, I wonder why Totet Matt doesn't fix that rat stuff that you were you were talking about. Is, isn't that like because 60 is not the, the, the right uh, thing? Shouldn't he be like uh, uh, math pi divided by something? Just a different number? It Probably. And Justin Boy managed to it's quite a... figure out that. It's quite an abstract um, prompt, I think. So they could probably get away with being less rigorous with, with some of the numbers. <laughs> and just being interpretive uh, and nobody would really know because you know you're not trying to represent something that's in real space yeah 
that Matt managed to put it below 256 bytes now, but he did lose a bit of the effect that he was going for. He's still trying to change some things though. Might have something back. No, oh, without a, a clear screen, this will indeed change effect completely. <laughs> Like I was saying earlier, it's a whole five bytes, and uh, every byte matters. Pretty sure I'm close, but didn't practice. <laughs> Should have practiced on that bad. <laughs> yeah, Lua does have some little quirks. If you don't, if you're not used to uh, the math library of Lua and the uh, little syntax things that Lua has, it can be hard it, within 25 minutes to to get things right. The fact isn't bad though. It looks very uh, sort of early 20th century modernist type type art. Hmm. Looks like that, <laughs> which I really like. Um, I'm not sure how uh, quite how uh, relevant it is to, to the psycho vibe, but uh, I'm certainly enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying both of these clocks. So, Aldroid, what, did you have any idea what would you implement if you were a psycho clock? Um, I think like a maybe a, a spinning knife or um, maybe something. I, I feel like I'd want something sinister. It's uh, it sounds like an ominous name. So um, these are very uh, maybe more the the mental side of of the meaning and uh, a more cerebral interpretation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, really, it's down to what the audience thinks and who feels like they've they've really seen something that fits the prompt. And you know, tell us in the chat. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I think we have Super Rogue back. Hello, Super Rogue. Are you there? Hello. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, thank you. This, this is what you get when you do live stuff. People yep, crash. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, back. I hope you hope you still be able to uh, to follow and uh, be able to commentate what's happening. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, I'll leave you two to it then. So we're starting to see a Dresden boy using the load technique for removing a few of those stray bites. Mm -hmm. But they're both really getting into the the final minutes and they are yeah, both yeah. struggling for bites. So uh, I'm hoping that they're not going to try adding too much at this late yeah. stage. Yeah, Dresden boy going for that uh, ticket load, just squeezing those last bites, and not within limits still. So it's very close yeah. though. Yeah. I think I think they'll be all right. I think uh, I think we'll see them both hit the the bite size mark. Yeah. Oh wow, that's very bumpy. That rainbow pattern effect is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It reminds me of bathroom windows, actually. <laughs> mm. Yeah, some scrolling. Hey, Dresden boy removed the clear screen just to please you, Eldright. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> that five bytes always matters. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like that. Very nice. Yeah, Totomat is taking this effect everywhere. Left, right, up, down. Uh, we've seen lots of iteration uh, going on there. Well, uh, Dresden Boy sticking to uh, the original concept. It's definitely been quite a journey this, this round, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be uh, hard to vote, this one. I, I couldn't call it. So, uh, yeah, up to the audience. Just uh, get your vote key. If you have your vote key, go to partylovebyte.party. Vote for your favorite. Yeah. 
dress them boy over, but just slightly. Yeah, I love the background effect on Totomats. I am really enjoying uh, Dress Some Boys' vaporwave kind of aesthetic though as well. Yeah. I do like that. And both within limits, so... Even Oki can take a breather now. There's still time to add some school text. <laughs> Wow. Oh, even in the uh, in the last minutes, Totemat still going in all directions. I think that's one advantage of not doing the load thing is it does give you a little bit more freedom. If you if you've got the time and you can be bothered to scroll through those huge long lines. You can still make some changes and it's a little bit easier than working with the string version of your code. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oops, low. <laughs> I like uh, Totomat is having a bit of fun here as well. I mean, that's important. I mean, competition, one thing, but also have fun at it. Yeah, we've got a little bit of time. So, um, so long as you can get it back to how you wanted it by the end of the set, yeah. feel free. Yeah, these are the final stretches. Dresden Boy is still going. Yeah. I like the counterclockwise moving of the... Uh, <laughs> yes, that is. That must be the, the psycho bit. The psycho effect. <laughs> yeah. Does Dresden Boy got a little bit more time, or? Yeah, I think this is it. So, go for a vote for your favorite. Both contestants within the limit. Uh, both beautiful effects, tough to call. So, uh, let's see who will progress to the uh, semi-finals and uh, see them in action tomorrow. So, um, yeah, bye-bye from me. Bye.